Okay, and in, uh, in this section we're going to take a look at the concept of center of gravity, or it's also called center of mass. Um, I actually like the term center of mass better, but you'll, you're going to hear both. We'll also talk about symmetry. Uh, we're going to look at some other, uh, we're going to actually tell the difference or, or try to try to figure out the difference between what an external and an internal force is, look at some examples, and then we'll finish off with some dynamic and uh, static forces as well. Um, first of all, center of gravity. I actually really enjoy teaching this in class because we can do lots of visuals, um, but right now we're going to use these two visuals. First of all, center of gravity or, or center of mass is an imaginary spot. It's not actually a part of a structure. It's not part of a person. Um, it's 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 simply just a place, okay? Uh, now this place, here's the kicker, here's the definition. It evenly distributes the mass of the structure, okay? So that means that it divides it. It divides it evenly, top and bottom, and also side to side, okay? Now this part is actually also very important, and we actually make a, a big deal of it in class, is if the structure is not supported, under the center of gravity, then it will not be, uh, then it will be unstable, it won't be stable, okay? Um, and what this means is that if the center of mass is not supported, there's, there's no base or no support right directly underneath the center of mass, then that structure will be uh, unstable. That's why every time you take a step, you actually, your, your center of mass or your center of gravity actually goes in front of you and then it's not supported by your feet anymore, and you actually fall forward. And then we take a step to keep us from falling, and we do that over and over. We call that walking or running, okay? So that happens every time. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at these two diagrams, and then I'll come back and I'll talk about symmetry. So let's look at this, um, um, this uh, a hockey player, first of all. The hockey player's center of mass, I, I want you to pay attention to this dot right here. This is his center of mass. And again, center of mass is an even dis distribution of, of the mass of the structure, right? So that means if we drew a line this way, okay? So all his upper torso and his arms and his head, all that is on this, this side of the line. And then his uh, rear end and his legs are on this side, okay? So that means there's an even distribution of mass top to bottom. We, can all, we will also be able to divide this right down the middle this way. And that means that there's the same amount of mass on this side as there is on this side. Okay. And that's what we mean by an even distribution of mass. Now, I don't know if you notice this or not, but this dude's one foot is up. Right? So is he very stable right now? No, he's not because, let me get a different color here so it doesn't confuse you. Because his center of mass, there's nothing supporting it. His only support is right there. That's the only thing touching the ice. So right now, he's actually falling. But the good news is, is he's doing it on purpose, right? Um, he's skating across the ice. He's actually using a lot of momentum, or she. Um, but right now, uh, he or she is not stable because the center of mass is not directly over a support. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, the horse now. Um, it's determined that the center of mass, center of gravity is right there. So if we drew a line right through there, so you got the whole upper, upper spinal column, the whole neck and head, uh, all this up here, we have an even arrangement of, or sorry, a balanced arrangement of mass top to bottom. And again, if we split this horse down the middle, that's so mean, that means that we would have it uh, doesn't quite look like that. Or, uh, I don't know if I agree with this picture, but we should have the same amount of mass on this side as we do on this side. Okay. Now, in this case, the horse, he's got a foot down there and a foot down right there. The, grab another color here. The center of mass, which is right there, right? It comes down right there, but it's supported by these two spots, right? It's kind of right in between the feet. So this horse is going to be stable. Okay, okay. so that is, that's center of mass stuff. You should be able to um, see a picture 
And uh, depending on what's going on in the picture, you should be able to identify that center of mass or center of gravity um, by splitting up the mass left to right and up and down. Now, if you look at um, this term right here, symmetry, there's lots of ways we can describe symmetry. Oftentimes, people describe symmetry by uh, you know, our face or our body. We could draw a line right down the middle. We look the same on one side as the other, and, and that's true. Those types of uh, objects, structures, are symmetrical. This type of symmetry that we're referring to here, uh, it, it is symmetry, but it's a balanced arrangement of mass. Okay, So when we take this, this horse and we draw a line right there, we have the same amount of mass on this side as on this side. That means it's symmetrical. This is a line of symmetry when mass is, is concerned. Okay. So the only difference between symmetry in this case and center of gravity, the center of gravity is up, down, left, and right, and symmetry is just left and right balance. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's move on. Internal and external structures, or sorry, forces. Um, internal and external uh, forces, you basically just have to really focus on what that word means. External means on the outside, Internal, obviously, means on the inside. So let's look at our, our first example here, um, a stretched elastic band. So in order for an elastic band to be stretched, some external force has to grab onto it and pull on it. That would be a force that's on the outside of the band, the elastic band, and it causes the elastic band to move. That's an external force. Now, when we let go, when that force is, is removed, the elastic band doesn't stay stretched. It pulls back in. Where did that force come from? It came from the inside of the elastic band. It's the actual structure itself pulling itself or moving itself. That's why we call it an internal force. It's inside the structure. Um, a bent tree branch. Hopefully you haven't done this to your buddy, but a bent tree branch, you know, if somebody's walking behind you and you are in front and you walk across this path and you, you pull a branch because it's in your way, you kind of push it out of the way and then you let go and that branch, you know, swings back yeah, to its original position and there uh, whacks your buddy there. Um, that's another example of an internal force. A coiled spring Right? When we push it down or, or inside of some kind of a mechanism, a spring is, is compressed. Right? When that spring is released, the internal force in the spring pushes it into action. Right? It changes its shape and its position. That's an internal force as well. I think by this, by this time you should kind of uh, have an idea of the difference between external and internal. But uh, here are some examples of, of external anyways. So me sitting on a chair. So the chair is the structure. Me sitting in it, I'm on the outside of the chair. I'm applying a force to that chair. I'm an external force. Okay. Stepping on your shoe. If the shoe is the structure, every time we step on our shoe, even though we're in it, <laughs> that's a little confusing, but any, every time I step on my shoe, I'm applying a force to the shoe. I'm an external force. Crashing into your brother, right? If you're running along and uh, you're out of control or you, you come around a corner and there he is and boom, you crash into him. Um, you are an external force that's causing your brother, the structure, to move, right? Okay, so those are your examples of external and, inter and, and internal. Um, now the last one is a, a dynamic force and uh, dynamic forces and static forces. Dynamic forces are forces that are always moving. Okay, and I always think of uh, you know if I had a stick of dynamite in my back pocket and it was lit and then it went off, I would probably be moving. Okay, <laughs> in a lot of different directions. So dynamic forces are those that are moving. A static force. Those are uh, forces that are not moving, okay? So the opposite of dynamic. Oftentimes, just, just kind of a side note here, a dynamic force is considered live, a live load, and static is referred to as a dead load. 
just some some phraseology that you're gonna kind of hear um, periodically. Okay, well I, I want to show you a picture though. Oh, where am I right here? So on this bridge. So if the bridge, if the bridge here is the structure, I want you to look there and consider what are some dynamic forces that are acting on this bridge. Okay, well these people here, they're on the bridge, they're moving, right? They're walking across it. They're dynamic forces. If it's a windy day, the wind is blowing on this bridge, the wind is a dynamic force, right? If a bird lands on, uh, if a bird lands on, there's my bird, lands on the bridge and is eating a meal or cleaning itself or whatever, that's also a load, a uh, small one, but still a load and it's moving, so it's dynamic. Okay. Um, some static ones, some static loads on here are, uh, well, what do you think? The actual deck of the bridge has to support itself, right? It's not moving, but it's still a load. It's a static load. Actually, every dang piece on this bridge is actually a static load. Okay. Moisture, if there's some maybe some ice, I guess it wouldn't in this picture because it looks like it's summertime, but if there was ice frozen to the, uh, to the bridge, that would be considered uh, a, a static load. These big pillars... There's still a being, is that part of it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, still applying a force to the bridge in a different direction, uh, mind you, but it's still applying a force. Okay, so dynamic and, and static loads. And I think we'll, we'll end it there.